Don't you know that not listening to the Shenmu AM2 podcast is way uncool? Welcome back to another episode of the Shenmue AM2 podcast. We're your hosts, Andrew and Matt. And we are here to review the season one finale, hopefully not the series finale, mm-hmm. of Shenmue the Animation, entitled Shenmue. Shamu. I mean Shenmue. It's about a whale <laughs> that needs to be freed from SeaWorld. Mm-hmm. They, did they ever free Shamu from SeaWorld? I think they probably just died. Yeah. <laughs> Downer. <laughs> Let's talk about anime. <laughs> this, this episode has zero dead whales in it. <laughs> uh, so, this episode, uh, kind of weird pacing to it, where mm. the intro to the show literally happens almost in the exact middle of the episode. Yeah. Uh, but it starts out with Rio and the gang bursting up a flight of stairs, out the door, and there is, hanging from the helicopter... Cool Z. <laughs> it's Lon Disan mm-hmm. uh, hanging from the helicopter with the, the branded Chiu Man helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just logo just plastered all over the side of it. Yeah. Hey, we're the bad guys. <laughs> not and so, not so secret anymore. And helicopters are loud too. Mm-hmm. So like you'd be looking and be like, oh, oh, there's the bad guys. <laughs> Uh, Londi's hanging from the helicopter. Rio has a stairs in him, has a bit of a flashback. Uh, so to set the scene on the roof as well. So Joy and Ren are with Rio. Rio. The two suits are guarding Yuan Deju. Londi's hanging from the helicopter, and Dun Yu is holding Wong, dangling him over the building. Mm-hmm. Um, Rio has a flashback of his father being killed, and they did this weird zoom in on his eye. And it's almost like it got to the point of like a microscopic blood vessel because it's like this red background. <laughs> we saw all the visions flashing in his eyeball. <laughs> Literally. Um, what's next here? I haven't noticed the two men logo on the side of the thing. And then he just charges Londi, doesn't he? <laughs> uh, yes, but the suits say something. And they finish one another sentences. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they talk to Dune Yu, and they're like, uh, this is your chance. This isn't verbatim, but it's like one of them says, this is your chance, and then the other finishes to impress Landi. <laughs> <laughs> like, those two are really close. <laughs> <laughs> they're buddies. They, they, they work the same shift. They finish each other's... Sandwiches. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so Wong's dangling over the, the thing. And something that does not happen in the game, we have the helicopter descends, Londi gets off the ladder, mm-hmm. Rio uh, charges charges him, his eyes are red, Londi's are like, not quite white, but like a very, almost, it looked like an almost very, 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 very soft blue. And he takes some swings at Londi, Londi's just like, yeah, 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 blocks or dodges everything. And then he hits him back and... He does not immediately crumple Rio. Yeah, Rio doesn't stand his ground, but like he doesn't he get doesn't, knocked on his ass. Yeah, that was very surprising. And Lon D drops the line. He's like, it's you, Hazuki boy. <laughs> you got a bit better. <sighs> he does say that he's improved since last time. Somewhat. Yeah, somewhat. <laughs> I want to really understand Lon D's age. Late 20s, early 30s. That's my guess. What do you think? Uh, I think you're probably right. Because um, their dads were buds. Londi and Rio. Yeah. Well, I guess that doesn't mean their dads had to be the same age. But. No. Um, Rio's about to get destroyed. Wong's about to be thrown off the roof. And Yuan Deju just yells, Enough. Uh, he doesn't want the boy to die, meaning Wong. And he says, I'll tell you the secret or whatever. Mm-hmm. Oh, this this must be after they continued their fight a little bit. And then yes. Lundy did put Rio on his ass. <laughs> um, By doing one of those stereotypical anime punch so hard, you see the imprint on their back. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Yuan Deju 
says, you know, put the boy down or whatever. And I think Do News like was like, hey, you're not my boss, blah blah blah. And then you hear Londi say like, put him down or whatever. So he does. Um, right off the building. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. He's like, release him, and he's hanging him over the edge. Very poor choice of words. But he does hurl Wong back onto the roof. Yeah, like really far. Yeah, and Wong just kind of takes that fall. Uh, pretty well, I'd say, for a child. Yeah. Most kids would be, uh, that probably would have killed them. <laughs> uh, he tells Lon D it's in Bailu Village. He doesn't really say what, but he just says it's in Bailu Village. Yeah, he says that, and that's all he says, and he could be lying, but Lon D's, like, immediately, like, grabs the, <laughs> grabs the rope and flies off. It, yeah, he's like, <laughs> it's literally like Poochie at a frame. Yeah. <laughs> uh, from The Simpsons. It's in Bailu. That's good enough for me, see ya. <laughs> <laughs> this is where the suits finished each other's sentences. Oh, okay. Was when uh, Dunu was upset that he wasn't going to rule Hong Kong. And they're like, well, you can still show Lan Di what your stuff is because he's still dangling from the copter up there. Yeah. So, uh, still going to watch this pay per view. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dunu gets ready to sucker punch Rio. Ren sees it coming. Hurls you on to Zhu in his wheelchair out of the way. Right off the, the side of the building. Goes to tackle Long. Rio out of the way. The punch comes from the opposite direction, hits Rio in the back, <laughs> and then sends him and Ren, who is just coming from the opposite direction, back flying from the direction that Ren so, came from. Was Ren successful? No, no, Ren just he probably made the situation worse. <laughs> Um, yeah, that was that, the way that was blocked out action wise. I, I didn't understand completely what had happened. But. Yeah, it was kind of a weird, weird setup. Hmm. Uh, Rio has a moment where he realizes he has to take on Dunyu, and he punches him square in like the forehead, mm-hmm. and Dunyu just laughs it off, and then punches Rio, and then literally stomps his head. Yeah. Like a, like it's a watermelon or something. He punches Rio, grabs his head, and slams it on the ground, and then stomps on it. He's trying to curb stomp Rio. Jeez. Uh, then Rio, while his head is being stomped, has a flashback to anyone that said anything to him in this, in this show. Yeah. Anyone of any importance. S- scanning for inspiration. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, like, I think it's all four wooed people, mm-hmm. Joy... Uh, the guy that works at the tea shop. <laughs> and probably his father saying he sucks. Yeah. Always his father saying he sucks. Uh, but uh, Rio like punches him in the ankle <laughs> and then does the move into his ribs, which I the don't QTE know. QTE move. I don't know if you've learned that in the in the in the show that we've seen. I don't think he learned that move, but I, I can't remember. Yeah. I guess that one was already in his arsenal. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, there's a scene too where Joy looks impressed afterwards mm. that Rio handled all this and then it runs in the background and just kind of like looks at her and gives her a little smirk <laughs> like he's kind of jealous almost <laughs> um, it uh, cuts back to Ren's hideout and it's Ren, Rio, Wong, Joy, Yuan Deju and then uh, the guy with the fucked up face <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's his name? Zhang? Is that it? I think so. Um, they refer to him as something else in this, though. Right. Uh, they're all there. Uh, they talk about... Yuan Deju talks about how Sun Ming Zhao was Lan Di's father, and that apparently Yi Wao killed him. They... <sighs> So we always suspected this was the story, but was it ever explicitly said in these these terms in the games? I can't remember because it's been so long since I played through the game, and I do need to play through them again. Mm. Um, but I don't think they ever one hundred percent confirmed that he was Landy's dad. Yeah, it just was very much implied. Yeah, um, but uh, they talk about the treasure as well. Um, because that's why the mirrors were created. And uh, so, the minute treasure's mentioned, yeah. Ren gets a, a big boner. And he's like, oh, I told you I have an eye for this. So was treasure... Treasure must have, must have been mentioned in the games, too. But I thought it was more about gaining supernatural powers. I thought that's what yeah what was mentioned. And I think they're happens. retconning that, maybe. Hmm. A little bit. Because there was no floating sword in this. Spoilers, there's no floating <laughs> sword. Um... And then uh, Rio realizes he needs to go to Guilin, and his eyes change color. And then we get the intro, uh, like, 12 minutes into this episode. (laughs) Yeah, pretty much almost halfway. And 
this I'm saying with 100% seriousness. I can confirm if there is season two, it's going to have a new intro video because Nozomi is not going to be in the second season. I think it'll have the same intro. <laughs> There's no way it can possibly have the same intro. How? Yeah. How? Yeah, probably not. Hopefully not. <laughs> There's yeah, the the intro is like entirely like the first I don't know half of it is just Nozomi stuff. It's yeah. And yeah, the, there's the no end, way they have the same the intro. The end credits, credits is all yeah. <laughs> Uh So we get the intro, and then it cuts to... Uh, we're still in Kowloon. Rio's walking with his backpack. Wong and Joy chase him like, Oh, so you're going to Guilin, which is kind of weird because they were just there when he said he was going to Guilin. <laughs> they say goodbye to him. He then uh, shows up at Manmo Temple. Uh, he says goodbye to Fang Mei and Hui. Han Hui, aka Master Mo. Um, and then he goes inside to talk to Zhuang to say goodbye to her. And Zhuang says, You're going after Lan Di. And Ryo replies, I'm going after the truth. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of. He Semantics. Gives the, <laughs> but he gives the opposite answers to what I think she was expecting him to say. Hmm. And then it looks like she's going to walk over and give him a hug. You think? And she gives him the half of the yin-yang sign hmm. that her brother gave to her, which obviously that's going to show up at some point in the future. And Yeah, he'll meet her brother and he'll see that little knick-knack. I think that piece is going to be like... <sighs> <laughs> Excuse me. That was mid sentence. Nar- nar- narcolepsy. <laughs> um, I think it's going to be like on a necklace on Londi or something in the other half. You think? Yeah. You think Londi is her brother? I think so. But I- Londi has a father, and they were orphans, weren't they? But maybe Londi went and found his father or something. Mm. He went to find the, the truth. I don't know. I think her brother is another member of, of the Chiyu men. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Um, he walks by the tea shop as he's leaving Kowloon, where we see uh, Guizang, um, the one of the guys that teaches the wood, the guy from the park, and just the guy that works at the tea shop, who turned out to be a minor character in the show. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't get to have a goodbye. They just saw him leave. They're like, well, fine then. Don't say bye. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, Joy visits her mom's grave, says something about uh, her dad and that she should visit him. So her dad's still around, which means the criminal organization he ran is probably still around, you would think. Yeah, they're, it's just these little breadcrumbs about what's going to happen next season. Mm. Um, I'm just wondering how different... Um, this, assuming this gets to season two, I'm wondering how different Shenmue Three storyline is going to be. I bet it's going to be all kinds of different. Even though Shenmue Three just came out, mm-hmm. I bet there's a lot of stuff they wanted to include in Shenmue Three that they didn't. So, do you think it'll just be the same storyline but more robust? Probably. Okay, that's kind of where I'm leaning as well. Mm. Uh, it cuts to Ren going to talk to Cool Z, who's the lead of the Chi Men, and Sam and Larry, and they're having a conversation, and they look over, and Wong is, uh, he's running a, um, lucky hit stand. <laughs> That's what he should have been doing. <laughs> but, Wong's smart, because you know what Wong knows? What? There's always <laughs> money in the banana stand. That's right. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? I do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if anyone knows what we're talking about right here, there's <laughs> always money in the banana stand. Uh, so Wong's selling bananas. Matt immediately is like, he should, this should be a lucky hit stand. I'm like, <laughs> what are they doing? <laughs> yeah, like, in my mind, I'm like, yep, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> that is a, a million percent right. Uh, then, I guess maybe they wanted to show that he turned over a new leaf and, uh, Lucky hit his sort of gambling, so yeah. it would still seem like he was doing shady stuff. Yes, that's fair. <laughs> uh, Ren says, Gui Lin sounds like a good time. And then... Does it, it though? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing happens there. Walking through some mountains. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's just full of country bumpkins. Yeah. They, they don't got no arcades. <laughs> Do you know what does sound good though? What? The ferry that Rio takes to to Gui Lin. Mm-hmm. It's not chugging along. It sounds like it's about to die, like the one in the game. <laughs> um, yeah, they sped through this whole portion. Did they ever? I blinked and we're in the caves. <laughs> wow, we thought parts of Shenmue One went by fast. Mm. Holy shit! 
They just strapped a friggin' jet engine to this part of the story and boom. So we skipped him getting off the boat and going, walking for a little bit. Uh, and we skipped them after they save the goat together uh, skip their walk to the village he just wakes up in the village so but some you know important bonding and character development happened during that walk so I hope they you know just move that somewhere else I guess but hopefully they don't lose it yeah we essentially went from Rio on the boat and it literally jump cut to him sitting in the rain on the riverbank hmm. has a flashback about someone in the town telling him that he needed to walk through the, the mountains of uh, Guilin to, to get where he was going um, and then you just see Shenhua dive in after this goat, and then he's just like, seriously? He has a sarcastic inner monologue, <laughs> chases, tells well, him, like, let go of the goat. That was the subtitle, at least. In Japanese, just went, what? <laughs> uh, the He tells her to get rid of the goat. She says the goat's not going to make it if she lets go. Blah, blah, blah. He grabs the thing. He The goat gets out of the river... And then she's like lying on a rock, and Rio gets out and just like lays on top of lays her. Lays on top of her, just drapes his arm Get, over, gets a little familiar. <laughs> and uh, then he wakes up in her bed. <laughs> <laughs> she took that as a sign. <laughs> she roofied him. <laughs> <laughs> Shenhua had her way with mm-hmm. Rio Hazuki. Yep. Um, so he wakes up and he's like, Where am I? She's like, You're in Guilin. And he's like, Huh. That was easy. <laughs> he, so, hit, he hit one of those staples buttons. That was easy. <laughs> this literally eliminates a day and a half of walking. <laughs> yeah. They don't Did sleep. Did she drag him? Uh, she, she strapped him to the goat, the tiny goat, <laughs> and pulled him along. Uh, I don't know, but man, this went fast. Mm. Uh, so he wakes up, he's looking around the house, sees the blueprints, for lack of a better term, for the mirror, realizes what it is. Um, he also had the, uh, the lacking dream before he wakes up. He just has a dream of everyone telling him what he's lacking. <laughs> Um, he wakes up, they go outside too, he sees the tree, and he's like, what? And he's like, literally sees his dad standing beside the tree, mm. and he's like, this tree, and she's, and she explains that it's a Shenmu tree, and the tree is like family. We get a couple little flashbacks of her like in a bassinet, then on the swing as a child, da 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 There's no, uh, there's no, in the game, isn't there, at some point, isn't there like flashbacks to like ancient China or something or, or is it implied that she's like the reincarnation of like an ancient Chinese princess or something in the game it is yes yeah I don't I can't remember when that happened so but um but uh in the photo of his dad and Sun Ming is there there are Shenmu trees but it's not this tree no it's the one you see in Shenmu it's 3 the one in Shenmu 3 that has the hand print on yeah. it um what is this note? Um, she does mention that her mom... He Rio asks if she lives there by herself after he wakes up in her bed. <laughs> and she's like, no, nah, I live with my dad. My mom's gone. They never say that her mom's dead, mm. do they? Yeah, I guess so. I don't think they say in the game or in this. Um, what is that word? <laughs> Terrible... <laughs> D-O-P-U-T-E-S? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what that is what did I write I cannot even read what I wrote here <laughs> sorry um the she he won't Rio wants to go to the cave and there's no walk to the cave <laughs> it literally is like a fast forward graphic mm-hmm. we're there mm-hmm. um she realizes she ha- she has a conversation that something's not right when the door's ajar or whatever yeah well you haven't fed your father in days <laughs> yeah of course something's not right uh, she just goes in. There's just a skeleton and an empty picnic basket. <laughs> picnic basket. Uh, so there's a letter. Her father stating his purpose is fulfilled. So we never we never find out what that means in the game or here. Like, did he just go like drown himself in a pool? <laughs> like, what did he do? Well, you know, he gets captured. That's the whole point of Shenmue Three. You try to save her father. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, but how did how did he know what was happening? Like he knew Rio was on his way. Yeah, he. Like, we don't really know how he knows that the prophecy is in motion. Well, is it like did Master Chen let him know? Maybe or Landi showed up and kidnapped him, and he's just like, well, "Can I write a note to my daughter?" <laughs> oh, yeah, like he he knows that he he knew that he was coming. 
Um, but there's never any explanation as to why the carvings. What? Why the giant carvings? Yeah, my life's work is complete. These giant carvings that serve no purpose. <laughs> like, do you need to go back there to like? If you have both mirrors, is that where you can use them to summon this power? Possibly. That like, is that the spot? But if if this prophecy of having these mirrors goes back ages there must have been another spot to use them Mm, because this hadn't been built yet yeah and if they're exactly replicas and you just need to put the mirrors together can you like knock those giant mirrors off the wall and put them together and get the power (laughs) i'm guessing you need to do something with like the beam of light into like those gems in the center of them or something maybe there's or there's more mirrors so many mysteries we better get a season two (laughs) Yeah, um, he calls it the trial of proof. Which just is... Her, her journey. Is he talking about the beginning of her journey, or is he just talking about literally, like, getting those fires lit? Is that the tr- trial of proof? No, I think it's her journey. I think okay. he's referring to her journey. Um, that she's reciting the prophecy. As uh, I knew she would. <laughs> something that happened in this episode that really bothers me, and people are guilty of it on YouTube all the time, this was the most important part of this episode, mm. and the credits are rolling over top of it, and I absolutely hate that. <laughs> you see it all the time on, like, Watch Mojo on YouTube, mm. when they get to whatever the number one thing is, and they already have the end graphic of like li- with links to other videos on it, mm. and it's, like, min- minimized into a little window. Yeah. Don't fucking do that. <laughs> God damn it. Well, I mean, they would have had to cut out even more if they didn't double up. <laughs> Well, they should have just left the intro out. We don't need the intro. They waited half the episode to show it anyways. Yeah, it's like 90 seconds long. Yeah, that would have been some good time to uh, devote to more story. Yeah, this this episode went by so fast. Mm. Like, this... Yeah, it's... Not a huge fan of this episode overall. What I did enjoy was the little tidbits of new stuff. Yeah, the new information. I think this, story-wise, might have been the most valuable episode, uh, but... Did you enjoy that Rio got to fight Londi a little bit? I did. I yeah. did. Um, it makes me wonder what the fight's going to look like in Shenmue 3, or mm. if there even is going to be a Shenmue 3 fight in Season 2, mm. if there's going to be a Season 2, knock on wood. Um, but yeah, this episode fucking flew by. Yeah. Flew by. And if they didn't, like, they took time to put in new stuff, but there's so much that got cut. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so well, this season's I mean, over. I guess uh, Yu Suzuki and, and his crew there, they, they know what is important to the overall story, so I guess I'm sure they're making the correct cuts, but... Yeah, and overall, they made Shenmue the animation. There's a lot of... Like, without a lot of Shenmue stuff, Mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. Like, no lucky hit, no tomato convenience, no looking for sailors, (laughs) no constant inquisition of stuff, like... It no arcade games other than like th- the arcade existed, but like all of he that. You missed out on learning a lot of moves, I think. Yeah, it was more learning, not necessarily the martial arts side of it, it was more like learning the mental aspect of it, but the game yeah. is definitely about both of them. Mm-hmm. And putting in the time to practice, like it's literally as a player, the mental of like, all right, I'm gonna do, go to the park and I'm gonna devote my time in the game. To Rio's time to you know make these uh, like grow my my move base or what I can't even string this together <laughs> a sentence here grow my move set um, but so much of the Shenmue feel of this is gone. Hmm. Um, On the plus side, I, I really enjoyed the 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 fights were well well choreographed I think and well animated and uh, the performances were good on the voice actors in the Japanese version at least yeah we haven't listened to the English one I may go back and watch the English one Um, where can you do that uh, someone sent us a link to it but I don't think the email came through properly Ah. so I may have to email them back but I I know my cousin Brian has it off Pirate Bay (laughs) Um, I yelled at him for that too (laughs) to support this project Uh, so so if you are looking for ways to support this, uh, if you cancel your 
um, Crunchy. Crunchyroll subscription, there's an option for like feedback. Mm. Say you're canceling it, but you will, you know, re up when Shenmue two or Shenmue season two uh, comes out. Yeah. And uh, the tweetathon now is going to be let's get Shenmue four, but also uh, something about I can't remember the hashtag that the dojo came up with for. Uh, season two of Shenmue the animation as well hmm. um, so like overall what'd you think of it I, I really enjoyed it um, they got a lot of my favorite parts in it and some of them were left out and I agree with you about the feel of it it didn't feel like Shenmue a lot of the time but some of that was still there I don't know the, the story um, the story kind of feels like it treads water in the middle a little bit where he's like learning martial arts uh, principles from people and it's just a bunch of lessons I guess and I don't know that's probably the slowest part is the four wudu and all that um, but yeah I've maybe I kind of wish they sped through some of that more and devoted more time to Kowloon maybe yeah, yeah. I feel the same way um, overall I really enjoyed it I was always because we know where the story's supposed to go, it's like watching a movie and or a TV show and you know what's going to happen. Like, you've read a spoiler or something, you're just, how is it going to get there? Mm. Um, I, that's kind of how I felt with this. I really enjoyed the little new things because we haven't really gotten new story for the original part um, ever. Mm-hmm. Once Shenmue 2 was released, that was it. Um we got some new story in Shenmue 3, but there's just little little tidbits of breadcrumbs dropped throughout this that hopefully will lead to new places in, in Season 2 of this show. Um, if you were to... If someone were to go play, say, Matt, I'm going to play Shenmue 3 tomorrow. Mm-hmm. If you had to choose, would you recommend them play 1 and 2 before Shenmue 3 or watch this? In, oh, uh, I mean... I would say give the game a shot first, but if if it's too old for you, then watch this. <laughs> I would say the same thing. I yeah. would give I would tell them to give the games a shot first, and if you find the pacing uh, of the games not great, then hop in. It's not even just the pacing. I think a lot of people have trouble with the controls nowadays. Yeah, and the footsteps aren't right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that's my biggest critique of the of the show would be the pacing. Mm. Uh, like you mentioned, the f- part with the Wudu just drug on, and Kowloon was literally like so much of Shenmue Two is uh, devoted to Kowloon. Mm. So much of it, um, things were minimized, like the fighting in Kowloon when you fight Baihu, like that was done in an instant, mm-hmm. I, and that's my favorite fight of the, the well, game. I wanted to see Chunyan in the, the pit where she knocks the guy into. It. <laughs> yeah. Um, there was a lot cut, but in order to get this into 13 episodes, cuts were necessary. Mm-hmm. It's never going to be perfect. Yeah. You know, for something that's we have so much nostalgia for, it's never gonna never gonna be perfect. But overall, I, I really enjoyed it. It was a it was a good effort, uh, and it was entertaining. I thought. Which is better, Shenmue the animation or season three of Twin Peaks? <laughs> Shenmue the animation. What would you give it out of ten? Um, I'd give it. An 8.5. 8.5? I was going to say 7.6. Oh, yeah. I think your 8.5 is generous. <laughs> um, it's the pacing that... Uh, I mean... I, I, again, I really enjoyed this. I, I was going to give it lower, but then I'm like, no, that's not fair. Because, like, I was going to give it lower based on the fact that the animation is, like, low budget. But I'm like, that's just Japanese animation nowadays. Like, I, I grew up with the animation boom of the late 80s, early 90s, where everything was smooth and fluid and beautiful. That's just not how anime is nowadays. I can't I can't hold that against it. <laughs> Um, so please tell us your thoughts. Um, leave your you know com- uh, your comments in the comments. <laughs> um, like, share, subscribe. Uh, do all that good stuff for us. Um, Shenmue M2 Pod on Twitter. Shenmue M2 Podcast at Gmail We're on Facebook with a page and a group. We're on the Dojo. Um, don't know what our next episodes are going to be, um, or when they'll be, or when they'll be. We'll figure something out. Um, we might do an episode collab with someone about someone that hadn't played the games watch the show we might be able to put that together we'll we'll see where the the trail through guilin takes us Mm -hmm. um but yeah that's that's it i don't think i have anything else to add about the show really enjoyed it hopefully it gets a blu-ray release Mm -hmm. um 
I, I don't know if Crunchyroll Originals do usually or not. I haven't looked into that. Nor have I. Mm. Uh, my big Shenmue Deluxe Edition thing is on the way. It's in the mail. I saw other people got theirs, yeah. So I'm going to... I'll probably film an unboxing video for that, throw it up on the YouTube channel, um, just because it's the CDs and the records and the special edition thing and the mm-hmm. uh, little cards from... Limited Run, that's the name of them. We'd like to thank our sponsor this week, Kowloon Graphic Design. Do you want the logo for your secret evil society emblazoned on something large like a helicopter? Contact us. Bye. Bye. Should I do that again? Bye.